The Blair Witch Project is remembered as groundbreaking and revolutionary because it created the found footage genre. The filmmakers understood that you didn't need the best equipment or the greatest practical effects. They just needed a few good actors and a lot of creative effort. The audience is willing to come along with you on seemingly absurd journeys as long as you offer them a decent story to go along with it. Hello and welcome to my channel. Here I review new movies and television shows and try to release a new review every day from Monday to Friday. Today I'm going over the film 52577. It's written and directed by Patrick Reed Johnson and stars John Francis Daly, Austin Pendleton, and Colleen Camp. 52577 is an unusual film with a lot of creativity and passion behind it. Filmed in an artistic style meant to feel like a home movie, scored like a Hollywood masterpiece, and starring a cast of passionate actors, this film is all over the place, and yet everything comes together to tell a heartwarming story of self-discovery and growing up. The film recreates Patrick's life as a boy growing up in rural Illinois, and follows him through his teenage years as he attempts to find his way in life both as a filmmaker and as a man. He struggles with being an amateur and dreams of being a big shot, but can't think of a way to make any of his dreams come to life. With his friends beside him, his family behind him, and dreams of Hollywood ahead of him, can Patrick find a way to make it work? This movie has a feverish passion for filmmaking and shows off a lot of technical knowledge, as well as dipping into the cooler aspects of practical effects. It also hits every emotion under the sun while it roller coasters you through them, before launching you safely into a heartwarming ending that leaves you with a great message and a little hope. It's got hilarious jokes, heart-wrenching and touching moments, and a lot of creative style. Patrick and his family are an eclectic bunch, and watching them film the different scenes from Patrick's movies was fun. The relationship between Patrick and his mother is very moving. The way she cares for him and the lengths she's willing to go to to help him were touching. The call between her and Herb was especially mesmerizing. The film uses a lot of metaphors and recreations and shows off a lot of creativity. The montages don't always work, but there were a lot of clever shots in there that were fun to watch. Some of the scenes feel drawn out, and the two hour runtime does feel a little long. Each montage goes on for too long, and the one at the beginning of the film was egregious and confusing. It had all these short little cuts and nothing significant was happening in any of them, so it was hard to piece together what the point of them was. The film does end up explaining it pretty well, but it makes the opening feel like a mess. The movie also has a cheesy quality to it that some people may find annoying. It's a bit of an acquired taste. The cast does an amazing job of their roles, and it is hard to pick just a few performances to talk about. John Francis Daly, Austin Pendleton, and Colleen Camp all do an exceptional job. Katie Jeep, Steve Coulter, and Mark Boyning all get exceptional moments as well, but have fewer opportunities to shine. Daly plays Patrick Johnson, the eccentric and passionate young teenager who finds himself lost. He wants to make films just like the big players in Hollywood, he just doesn't know what to do to get there. Daly nails the teenage emotional state and has a few beautiful moments throughout this film. He does really well with the monologues, and that creepy smile he gives each woman over the course of the film had nerd written all over it. My favorite scene, though, is in the office when he's meeting the big shot and starts to feel like an imposter. That thousand yard stare from Daly was great. Colleen Camp doesn't get a lot of screen time, but her love for her son is amazing to watch, and I was moved to tears during the phone call with Herb. The tremble in her voice and the look on her face, it was just a great performance overall. Austin Pendleton, like Camp, doesn't get a lot of screen time, but like a meteor smashing into the earth, he makes a big impact. His character Herb is beaten down by the reality of Hollywood, and seems to be helping Patrick out of some weird sense of obligation, but the way he talks about making movies and the passion he has during their conversations stands out as exceptional. The production quality of this film is a real treat. The film has two looks and both are interesting in their own way. At times it is a well-centered, smooth experience that feels like a solid Hollywood production. At others, the video is grainy and unfocused. The camera is zoomed in too close to the actors' faces, and the hand holding it is shaking. The filmmakers made a conscious decision to have the film feel like a home movie at times, and they perfectly replicate the amateurish quality, but in a way that feels deliberate. There's some beautiful cinematography and some truly awful practical effects, but both add to the charm of the film immensely. One of my favorite parts of the movie is all the different driving scenes where they use models instead of real cars. It lets them do so many fun, nonsensical scenes. It also feels appropriate given the movie's setting and its obsession with the practical effects of movies like Jaws, 2001, and Star Wars. The soundtrack carries a masterful understanding of emotion and deploys it at the perfect moments throughout the movie. There are original songs and boilerplate tracks, and both are used effectively to amplify the emotions of the scenery. 
52577 is an odd film with an unbelievable amount of heart and soul. The passion and creativity behind each scene are a wonder to behold. And even though it isn't quite perfect, I really enjoyed it. 8 out of 10.